Um, now we're going to go to our next speaker, our speakers, sorry. Uh, we have Dr. Ali Nabavi and Mustafa Mahfouz. Okay, thank you, Derek and uh, Rick. This is my presentation, FPGA-based power electronics ads on EHS to develop an eye controller for PC fast charging the station. First of all, I would like to thank all the team members from the Cape and the Canyon for getting this done. The main objective of this presentation is to show how we use the Opal RT electric hardware solver, EHS, to develop an eye controller for PC fast charging system, which will be installed across Trans-Canada Highway. Also, I'm going to present a top level and general review of the power electronics converter topology, its controller design and development of a 60 kilowatt prototype. The main challenge of the design is that fast charging system requires a large amount of energy in a very short period of time. The problem is that the existing Trans-Canada Highway power grid infrastructure cannot deliver this power. To solve this problem, an on-site battery storage system is utilized to reduce the impact of fast charging on the grid. So this slide shows the main elements of the charging station. Each station has three charging units which is supplied with one storage battery you see at the left side. The charging system is comprised of a power core, which includes two MI controller boards, and three DC-DC converters, and a power link that communicates with EVs and power core to deliver the requested current to EVs. Here is the development process. The development process has different stages and different phases. It started with the paper design to identify the converted topology and selecting preliminary parameters. Then after line nonlinear and time domain simulation was carried out to finalize the system configuration, optimizing the parameters and designing the feedback controller. So to validate the offline simulation results, real-time simulation was performed using Opal RT EHS to evaluate the performance of the system in a long-run simulation. At this stage, an actual NI controller is configured in a hardware-in-the-loop arrangement to get the feedback signals from the output of the charger and generates the gating signals for the switching devices. When the NI controller was tested, we made sure the controller program was fully functioning. Then it was deployed on the actual setup to evaluate and validate the system performance. After each test, the lessons learned from the rapid prototype are used in an iterative loop to modify the configuration and parameters in the simulation model. Converter configuration. We selected the isolated DC-DC topology for power converter, which has a high frequency AC in the middle stage for the power core. The isolated concept enables connecting the charger units in series and or parallel configuration. The converter operates at switching frequency of 10 kHz to reduce the size of the output filter and magnetics. Phase shift gating control strategy is adopted to provide soft switching condition. And uh, because of the system requirements, a unidirectional power flow topology is selected. Is that? Hello? We will say in can be answered after the Hello? Yeah. Sorry about and that. Because of the yeah. Because of the system requirements, a unidirectional power flow topology is selected. Therefore, the DC PC converter has a H bridge at the front end and a diode rectifier at the EV end. This slide shows the, shows the major elements of the DC DC converter configuration. The DC bus at the left side is connected to the storage battery, into EMI filter, H bridge, 
high frequency transformer and AC inductor, rectifier plus a snubber, output filter, output field and EMI filter, and connection to the power link at the right side. Here is the circuit that is used for offline simulation in the Simulink SIM power systems. The controller is uh, at the left bottom side. The model developed in SIM power system toolbox is used by Opal RTE EHS to generate the system matrix. The Opal RTE EHS solver used the system dynamic model developed in Simulink. You can see it in the top right. To define models that will be executed during the RT lab simulation in the lab field and generates the system matrix. The hardware platform for EHS there is the NICI Compact Trio 9039. The system matrix is transferred to the NI Compact Trio PGA and control and feedback signals are exchanged to the external controller to the NI Compact Trio input output cards. NI Compact Trio has the flexibility that we can replace different digital analog input output cards for different applications. The version that we have is EHS64 that can handle up to 72 switches, up to 32 current or voltage sources, and up to 32 current or voltage measurements. This is the EHS interface in lab view. The C power system model is loaded here and we can configure the input output channels and assign dating signals to the switches. After configuring the solver, the system matrix is generated and is deployed in the compact to FPGA. For the proposed PC-DC converter, the simulation time step is about 340 nanoseconds that is fast enough to simulate the system with 10 kilohertz surging frequency. This slide shows the NI controller. The NI sub GPIC is used for the hardware in the loop simulation. This is the same controller that is installed in the actual circuit. This slide shows the actual setup. You can see the same NI controller in the setup at the top left uh, of this slide. This rapid pro prototype was developed for the proof of the concept. All out test results were investigated and analyzed to identify the phenomena that couldn't be captured in the simulation. So as a result, in an iterative manner, the system topology and circuit model for the sake of simulation were modified and controller was updated accordingly. So this slide shows some test results, close agreement between the results obtained in real operation and revised simulation model validates the design concept and controller parameters. The high frequency transformer current and edge bridge voltage and output of the EV current are shown in this slide. Okay, here is the final product. It is ready for deployment. It took about 18 months from starting the real-time simulation to develop the MI controller, delivering the product, and get the final approval from ULN ESA. Here are the conclusions. Real-time simulations expedites the development process, lowering the development cost and reducing the safety risks for developing the system at high voltage and current. This concludes my presentation and Mustafa will take over. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, hi everyone, uh, thanks Dirk um, and everyone who participated uh, in organizing uh, this webinar. Uh, today I'm presenting my user experience uh, with EHS on Compact Trio system to test the control system for a battery enabled electric vehicle DC fast charging station. So basically I use Opal RT's EHS to simulate a fast charging station in real time and test the station's control system uh, using control hardware in the loop concept. Uh, this is basically the structure of the charging station I'm working on. It employs multiple DC fast charging units, each rated at 100 kilowatt, a solar PV system, a, and a storage battery. 
then the entire station is interfaced uh, to a weak AC distribution feeder, uh, as shown by the supply grid, using bidirectional AC to DC converter. Our, obje our objectives are, um, first, we want to develop and test the local controller or the fast charging unit when implemented on NI compact trio system. This is basically uh, quite similar to what Ali presented before me. The second objective is to achieve higher charging voltage uh, for electric vehicles by connecting two chargers in series at their output uh, as shown in the right figure. This is actually a requirement by many new generation uh, electric vehicles. For example, the Porsche Taycan, uh, which is gonna be released by the end of this year, it's expected to charge at 800 volt DC. Uh, and as Ali mentioned before, uh, a single charging unit uh, can achieve as high as 500 volt DC. So we need to connect two units in series to be able to achieve uh, higher charging voltages. So developing and testing the local control of series connected uh, units is basically the second objective. Uh, the third objective uh, is to develop and test uh, in real-time hardware in the loop, the local controller for the grid interface AC to DC converter on the same compact trio system. And last but not least, uh, we want to develop and test the supervisory control that monitors the status of the storage battery and coordinates the station's local controllers to provide control protection power and energy management uh, to the storage battery. So uh, mentioning the objectives, now we have an idea of the devices under test. Uh, first, we have the local controller of the charging converter for two different switching frequencies. Uh, so we use uh, 10 kilohertz using silicon uh, IGBTs and 50 kilohertz using silicon carbide MOSFETs. Uh, for, for this purpose, we simulated the, in real time the power circuit of the charging unit, uh, including the storage uh, EV battery models, EMI um, input and output filters, as well as the DC to DC conversion stage. These numbers give some insight for those interested in using EHS on compact trio system. The number of states uh, as defined by EHS is the number of switches, uh, diodes, inductors, and capacitors in the simulated circuit. So for this system, uh, the number of states is 32, and the minimum simulation time step is 340 nanoseconds. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that uh, for switching frequencies uh, higher than 10 kilohertz, we could, not, uh, we could not get similar results compared to the offline simulation. Uh, so for 50 kilohertz, we had to migrate to the averaged model of the DC to DC conversion stage. And uh, when we did that, we got accurate real-time results uh, with respect to the offline simulation. And here, uh, when we simulated two chargers in series uh, to test their local controller, uh, the number of states, uh, as well as the minimum simulation time step, uh, basically uh, doubled. Uh, and this is the third device under test, uh, which is the local controller uh, of the grid interface uh, VSC. So we simulated the distribution transformer, AC filter, uh, AC to DC conversion stage, the DC filter and storage battery model. Um, this is the most number of states uh, we simulated for a switched converter uh, HIL test. Uh, the number of states are 78 and the simulation time step is 880 nanoseconds. Finally, we have the supervisory control of the charging station. Uh, for this purpose, the device under test is technically the complete control system of the station, where the supervisory control is implemented on uh, PLC Next. Uh, for those who don't know, PLC Next is a programmable logic controller from Phoenix Contact, and the local controllers are implemented in Compact Trio system. The challenge here is that if we use the switched models for every converter in charging station, we will end up having 206 states, uh, which is not supported by EHS X64 uh, that we are using. So we had to simplify the models and use averaged models of converters, uh, which are good enough for capturing the low frequency dynamics of the charging station. Finally, uh, this is the experimental setup uh, for the control hardware in the loop. On the left side, we have two compact trios where the top one acts as the real-time simulator for the station's power circuit. 
and the bottom one is where uh, we implement the station local controllers. And on the top right part, uh, we have the station's supervisory control implemented uh, on PLC Next. Uh, what I would like to say here is that, interestingly, uh, the entire setup can fit in a small suitcase, uh, and this can be found as a huge advantage uh, of running EHS on NI platforms uh, than using more bulky uh, real-time simulators. Uh, by this, I conclude my presentation. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I'll be happy uh, to have your questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Nbavi. Thank you, Mustafa, uh, for the wonderful presentations. Uh, just one thing to mention. So you mentioned the, the, the number of states not being supported with EHS 64. Just so you know, I'm, as I'm sure you do, with our bigger version, EHS 128, we can support up to 300 states. So just, just to mention that, uh, you know, thank you. you guys are wondering. Yeah, of course. Thank you.